Hey, this is Ryan from 60 Cycle Hunt, the guitar podcast. And right now I'm revealing the results of that uh, Ventress versus Fender unit shootout I did last week, depending on when you're watching this. The previous week, I guess is how I should phrase it. Uh, so anyways, long story short, Ventress is the A recording in that video. And obviously the Fender unit is the one recording in that video. Video. So go back, check your vote, check your comments, see if you were right or wrong. Uh, to me, they do sound different, but I think Ventress is the clear winner for a digital or pedal style emulation of a drippy reverb. There's just nothing better right now. And honestly, it gets me so close that I don't feel a need to bring my reverb unit to gigs. I already didn't a lot because I relied on the FRV1 and the Topanga together to get me kind of that sound. I'm in a surf band that's pretty non-traditional, so I didn't have to lean on that as hard as other surf bands might have to. But still, I say the Ventress gets you really, really damn close, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this on the boards of a lot of surf rock guitarists. Um, let's talk about the settings that I had in that shootout. I'll flash the settings up on the screen right now for the Ventress. I did a screen grab of the um, of the settings and the software. Get this, if you have one of these, get the software and mess around with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do in there that really opens up a lot of possibilities. And then on the uh, Fender unit, I had it to 666, the number of the drip. It's kind of an urban legend within you know the surf music world that 666 is the optimum setting on a reverb unit. So I decided to have that be the starting place. I honestly don't use the reverb unit set to those settings. Uh, after I show this off, I'm gonna go to the settings I typically use on the reverb unit. And then I've got the number two preset on the Ventress built to kind of live more in that area. It's not exact, I didn't model it exactly, but I was just like, Here's you know the kind of sound that I like to use from a drippy reverb. All right, so here is the sound of the Fender unit. I'm using a Jazzmaster this time on the bridge pickup. And here's the Ventress. I'm going to have to do some work in post because the output dips a little bit when I turn on the Fender unit and it goes up a bit. There's a bit of a boost off the Ventress when I turn that on. So there is a volume difference that I'm going to have to correct in post just to make this make sense. Um, I've been messing around in the software and I can't figure out a way to dial back that boost from the Ventress. Uh, and you know, I don't know how to fix the volume drop from the Fender, obviously. All right, let's do some light chord comparisons and then I'll jump into that new setting. Here is the Fender unit. Here's the Ventress. Now let's check out that other setting now. I'm gonna put the Fender unit into where I usually like to have it. Uh, I like to have mix somewhere around there. I roll the tone back a bit and I leave the dwell right in between six and seven. Here's that setting. <laughs> Here is that new setting on the Ventress that I put together. They sound different, but it's uh, it's they both have more of a a tight, 
pulled back mix sort of sound, warmer trail, uh, not as bright and shrill as the settings were on those original two settings that I put together. So that's more of a concept of a usable reverb setting for me. All right, let's talk about some of the other things I've learned about the Ventress since the last video. Um, big thing is pre-delay for a surf rock drip all the way down. Uh, there's not really pre-delay in surf music. Pre-delay is more of like a rockabilly thing. And the drip that you get from a Fender unit isn't pre-delay. The drip is right there on your plane dynamic. So you want it to be as tight as possible. Um, these settings here don't really reflect the, uh, the preset that I have, but you want to keep the time pretty tight. You don't want to have it be really loose. Um, I mean, long trails are fine, but if you're really trying to milk that drip, then you want to have the time be pretty tight. Uh, mix, if you go too crazy, it just takes over everything. That's more of a sound effect sort of setting than an actual player setting. You can actually keep it down pretty low and get a nice subtle drip that's much more usable for general playing. I mean, right around there is kind of where I live mix-wise. Then, of course, treble control. I actually keep it pretty bright on the Ventress because it's got a boosted, warmer sound than the Fender on a similar setting. I And as far as control one goes, I actually reassigned that knob to be the output control. I'm not sure what output means, but it seems to be like a different kind of mix for the drip signal or the reverb signal. I was trying to find a way to lower the, uh, the volume difference. But you can hear it's... It's like an independent wet control. So I can get all the way dry and get, you know, more wild or con conservative with how I mix in that. Stock, it's a low end control. So it's kind of a bass control. I find that I don't really need that live. I've already used this live and having the output is much more useful for me to, you know, find a mix that works with how I'm playing with it. And then control two is a drive. It's pretty subtle. You can hear it, it pushes that drip a little bit harder. I hope that answers some questions. This is a fun experiment. I've got a lot more exploring to do with this pedal. There's so many other settings on it. There's a lot you can do with splitting ser uh, stereo channels and uh, different kinds of controllers, expression pedals and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to do with this thing and I just have to spend the time to figure it out and I'll be making more videos of it. All right, like, subscribe, dislike, uh, Leave me rude comments if you want. Uh, if you really like what we do here, support the channel through Patreon. All right, later, guys.